Hello and welcome everyone today on to on my today's session. This is your host Farid Pasha signing in from Toronto, Canada today. And I hope all of you are doing good. So in today's session, I'll be talking about algebraic calculations in the Wolfram language. Why I choose this topic for today's session is I got a chance to talk to some of my friends in the last month and they told me that algebra is uh, critically important because it is often viewed as a gatekeeper to higher level mathematics. And they also told me that it's a required course for virtually every post-secondary school program. The moment I heard about that, I said, I should be doing a quick session on this and letting my users know which functionality and the functions are available in the Wolfram language to them, which they can readily use. And I also noticed that algebra is very important because it is used in countless fields and applications. And every single other branch of math uh, is based on that. And we use this to express and generalize numerical patterns. Equations, inequalities, mathematical expressions are perfect examples for that. And how I have paced my session today is I have tried to divide my talk in eight different parts and I'll give you some small examples from each of these category. And I hope that at the end of the session, you will be at least able to know 25 or more functions which are available in the Wolfram language, which can be used for algebraic computations or calculations. I know most of you are most more experienced and more knowledgeable than me as well. And this might be a little bit basic refresher for you, but I hope you will get some knowledge today from my today's session. So let's kick off the session by seeing what can be done in the symbolic computing in Wolfram language. One of the important features of the Wolfram system is that it can do both symbolic as well as numeric calculations. This means that it can handle algebraic formulas as well as numbers. So let's take a typical numeric computation. We can say like 3 plus 62 minus 1. So a typical example of a numeric computation. Similarly, we can see a typical example for a symbolic computation as well. So for example, 3x minus x plus 2. So you can type any algebraic expressions into the Wolfram system. For example, minus 1 plus 2x plus x cube and you can just type it into the Wolfram system as well. Similarly, Wolfram system automatically carries out basic algebraic simplification, simplifications. For example, if I type like x square uh, plus x minus 4x square, you will notice that Wolfram language will automatically simplify it and combine the, the values which are similar and give me, instead of x square minus 4x square, it will give me x minus 3x square. So it tries to combine that. So you can type in any algebraic expressions using uh, any arithmetic operators and Wolfram system will rearrange 
and combine terms using the standard rules of algebra. Let's take another example over here. So maybe I have x, y. So one thing I want to mention over there, if I type x and y together without any space, Wolfram language will consider it as a single variable. If you want to mention x as a separate variable and y as a separate variable, always remember to give a space between them. Otherwise, it will take it as a single variable. So let's take it like x, y plus 2x uh, square, um, maybe multiply by 2y. And then we can, you just, you can type it any values, like maybe y square uh, minus 2yx, any combination of that. And it will try to rearrange and combine terms using the standard rules of algebra. So let's take another example. Maybe this time we'll have like x plus 2y plus 1. And we say, OK, we need to multiply this with x minus 2 with the So the same thing can be done with a function. So let's see. Let's see there's a function called expand. So what does the expand function does? It will take this, for example, you want to multiply this and uh, get the products and the powers. So we can put this in the expand function. And this function will multiplies out products and powers. Similarly, the reverse for that, there's a function called factor. So if I just put percentage sign, which is, you know, is a shortcut for getting the last output back. So there's a reverse function for that expand. And you can reverse that same thing by using the factor function. So you can type in more complicated expressions, but it is important that you put parentheses in the right places. So for example, you have to give the expression x and then you want to uh, have the raised to power x and then I'm using max so I'll use command uh, 6 and then it will take me up to have the powers for that. So I can type over here for y. But if you want to type it into the other form, use so remember to use the correct parenthesis for that. So it will be like x raised to power 4y. So if you leave out the parenthesis, you might get some different answer. So always remember to recheck the correct expressions typing into that. So you can uh, type maybe a more complicated formula like this. So maybe square root of two divided by some variable and take. So all the parentheses has to be in the correct position to give you the right answer. So when you type in an expression, the Wolfram system will automatically also apply uh, some rules for transforming expressions. These rules includes the standard rules for algebra such as x minus x will be considered as zero together with more sophisticated rules. So for example, let's take an example. Square root of one plus x and So here, the Wolfram system uses standard rules of algebra to replace the under root and give me a simplified result. So, but for certain cases, Wolfram system will don't know any rule for this, for the expression. For example, if when you take a log of uh, one plus cos of x, So because Wolfram system doesn't 
know the rule for this expression. So it leaves the expression in the original form as you gave to it. So the notion of transformation rules is very general one. So uh, in fact, you can think of the whole of the Wolfram system as simply a system for applying a collection of transformation rules to many different kind of expressions. So this takes me to the my other uh, next topic, which will be the values for the system. So most of the time when you are doing certain calculations, uh, you are doing like writing an expression like x uh, plus x, which will give you like 2x. It is treating the variable x in a purely symbolic or a formal fashion. In such cases, x is just like a symbol that can stand for any expression. But whatever or certain scenarios, you need to replace a symbol like x with some definite value. For example, uh, you have an uh, in the same expression, you want to uh, say that my the value of x should go to 3. So in Wolfram language, this x like goes to like dash and then the forward arrow. This is same like saying x goes to 3 or replace x with the 3. So doing a transformation, we have a rule which is a transformation rule which is a slash dot dot and if i say like 1 plus 2x and then say apply this transformation rule and what is my rule is that x goes to 3. so in this case what happens it will transform the value of x replace it with the 3 replace or you can say this function is like replace by function x to 3 and this will give 1 plus 2 multiplied by 3 which is seven in this scenario. So you can replace x with any expression uh, with the, and every occurrence of x is replaced by that. So for example, if you have a expression like one plus uh, x plus x squared, and then you say, okay, I need to replace x with uh, two minus y. So you can, it will just replace wherever there are x, it will be replaced by two minus y. So this is basically a transformation rule and the Wolfram language treats it like any other symbolic expression. So x goes to three plus y in this way. And then you can apply the transformation rule on the previous line also by saying like, x square minus 9 and you say okay I want this x goes to 3 plus y and I'll just take a shortcut key by putting and this the transformation rule is applied so transformation rule is a very important in doing algebraic calculations because when you are solving lengthy expressions it is easy for you to replace the values put a definite value to your uh, symbol by giving the replacement operator and you can give, apply these rules by putting the rules in the list as well so for example uh, let's take another example you have a expression like x plus y and then it is also like uh, uh, let's make it more interesting by adding another uh, Let's see. I don't know why my computer is typing 2x every time. I'm My system is in love with x right now. <laughs> and I say, okay, I want to replace by, and then I can give a list of values as well. So I say like x goes to 3, and then y goes to 1 minus a maybe. And then when I evaluate it, it will replace all the x by 3 and with y with 1 minus so the replacement order uh, backslash dot allows you to apply transformation rules to particular expressions. But sometimes if you want to define uh, the exact value to a variable, you can also do that. And you know, there's a direct assignment like x is equal to three. So once you have made this 
assignment like x is equal to 3, x will always be replaced by 3 whenever it appears. So if I call x, you say it will give me the value 3. So if I have, an, I write another expression which has x now, like uh, x square, so it will take 3 because I have a definite uh, expression ass value assigned to this variable and it will give, give me the direct value. So once you have assigned some values, you also might want to clear those values. So if I say x is equal to a dot, it will just clear the values. There's also a function called clear, which will clear the value saved in a certain variable, but x is equal to dot, if I put, it will also clear the values. So now you see if I ask s x anywhere, there is no value still stored in the x. So this is also uh, a way you can clear the values assigned to any specific uh, uh, functions. You can also uh, supply certain uh, values to a symbol as well. So for example, if you have an expression like t is equal to 1 plus x square, and then you say, okay, I want to find the value of t and then replaces x by 2 in it. So you can just say, okay, t replaced by x goes to 2. So it, it calculates the t from here and then it just replaces the x in the value of t, which is saving 1 plus x square and the x is replaced by t. Similarly, you can say, okay, I have a t and replace it by x is leading to a 5a. So this finds the value of by replacing the values and then evaluate the uh, result also as well. So maybe in that you can say, okay, replace t with x where x goes to pi. goes to pi. And if you want to have a numerical value, you know you can have post functions also and you can call the numerical value for that and you can get the answer for this also. So uh, assigning values, clearing values, this is very common uh, feature in the algebraic calculations and uh, this is st very straightforward in Wolfram language as well. So Let's move forward and see how you can uh, be transforming algebraic uh, expressions. So uh, there are often many different ways to write the same algebraic expression. So for example, if you want to write 1 plus x whole square, you can write it like in this form, or you can just write the same expression in an expanded form like 1 plus 2x plus x square. So, Wolfram system provides a large collection of functions for converting between different forms of algebraic expressions. I also gave you the examples for the expand, which basically multiply out the products and powers and give you the result as sum of terms. The other function which is normally used for transforming is factor, which will write the expression as a product of minimum, uh, minimal factors. So these are the two common functions for uh, transforming algebraic expressions. Uh, let's take an example over here, another one, maybe expand. And I want to expand uh, of expression one plus x and what is it? And you see factor basically reverses and recovers the original form for that. It is uh, easy to generate complicated expressions with expand. So for, so for example, if, if you give uh, some uh, more uh, complicated expression like, uh, um, let's take one plus uh, x uh, plus three y 
So if you want to see the full form of any uh, variables, you can uh, do that. Or if you want to see the simpler expressions, factor will be the right uh, choice for getting the simpler uh, expression. But in certain scenario, there are some cases where factor can give you more complicated expressions. So for example, if you are doing like factor of uh, x raised to power 10 minus 1. So this might give you a more complicated answer and you say, okay, I want to see a more simpler one. So x pan can maybe able to give you a simpler answer for that. So you can transform from one form to another and expand and factor are the two common uh, functions which are available for uh, transforming algebraic expressions. Let's move forward. And let's see how what other functions are available for simplifying uh, situations where you want to write a particular uh, algebraic expression in the simplest possible form. So although it is uh, difficult to know exactly what uh, means in all the cases of the simplest form, but it is a worthwhile uh, practical procedure to look at many different forms of an expression and pick out the one that in, uh, involve the smallest number of parts. So simplify or a full simplify are the major simplifying algebraic expressions functions which are available in uh, Wolfram language. So for example, you have a function which is like x squared plus 2x plus 1 and you want to simplify this. So just wrap it in the square brackets and call the simplify function. and it will give you the simplest form of this specific expression. So maybe, for example, you have another function uh, x, which we saw earlier as well, x raised to power minus 10. And you want to simplify this. So rather than you deciding yourself either to use an expand or a factor or something, you can just call the uh, simplify function to clean up complicated expressions that you get as a result of computations. So these may, might seem like a very uh, small and easy expressions to solve, but when you are solving larger expressions, the, it, it, it makes more sense to get a simplified uh, answer for that. So for example, you are solving any uh, integral uh, function like uh, one divided by x raised to power four minus one, and you want to integrate this with respect to x. So let's see if we use the simplify on this. We can get a more simplified results for that. Similarly, when you are uh, differentiating certain values, so maybe uh, you are uh, you want to differentiate my this last result, which is the integration of that with respect to x, and you get these things. And then maybe you say, okay, I want to have a more simplify answer for that. And you can use the simplify function available, and it will give you a more uh, compact answer for 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 something like over here. So simplify it succeeds in getting back the simpler form of the expression. So uh, simplify is set up to various standard algebraic transformations on the expressions you give. Uh, Sometimes, however, it will take more sophisticated transformations to make. And for that, you can also try full simplify, which will give you a much uh, 
uh, wider range of transformations involving not only algebraic functions but also many other kinds of functions as well so for example if i have this uh, if i use simplify on uh, gamma x gamma 1 minus x but you see i didn't get any uh, simplification or the simplify doesn't does nothing for this expression but what if i pass this same uh, into full simplify so full simplify is able to transform it to a more simple form so that's why i mentioned and said earlier that the full simplify is, has a much wider range of transformations and that can be, that can also be applied on uh, functions which are not only algebraic functions in nature so uh, but uh, I, my personal prefer preference when I'm solving only algebraic uh, functions is to use simplify because that is much faster and it will solve uh, and it will give a simpler expression much quicker but if you are dealing with certain expression which are not algebraic in nature and you say oh simplify doesn't do anything you can also apply full simplify to do that so let's take another example if i have uh, uh, let's take a full simplify on this example so if i apply a full simplify on this expression 1 minus a square divided by b square and another expression over here see it will give me the answer one so it fully simplifies that but if there are other variables like if i change this variable to c square so and this also goes to so when the variables are in the order the expression is not that much simplified so th this is you have to uh, manipulate a little thing see exactly what expression you are dealing with and based on that you will be able to justify using either full simplify or the simplify function okay so let's move forward and uh, see how you can like uh, do complicated algebraic expressions which are uh, usually written in many different ways so we have already seen the function expand we have already seen the function factor we have seen the function simplify so but however uh, particularly when you have rational expressions that contains quotients you may need to use other functions so for example i have taken an example over here so for example i have this rational expression that can be written in many different forms so i have this expression e and if i you apply expand on this you see expand expands it out the numerator but leaves the uh, denominator in the factored form so let's see if i apply the same with expand all and now you see the difference now the expand all what has done is that expands out everything including the denominator so it, when you are doing only expand it only expanded the numerator not the denominator but when using expand all it expanded everything available to that Similarly, if you use another function like together on this uh, output over here, you will see that all the terms are now put together over a common denominator. So the same expression, but you can have different transformations of the same thing. So if you want to have an expression where all the terms are collected together over 
a common denominator together is the right function for use that similarly if you want to uh, break the expression apart into terms with uh, the simple denominator you can use a function called apart and you see what apart does is it has broken down the expression now into terms with simple denominators so denominators have been simplified in that and if i use factor which i think i've started to love i come back to the original form and if i use simplify on this this is the simplest way to write the original expression so this was the original expression we started it we were able to transform it into different forms depending upon your requirement if you want to see them with expanded denominators collected together uh, with the uh, uh, by using the together function over a common denominator or you want to express the terms uh, in terms of a simple denominator then you can use the apart function or you can use uh, simplify to see the simplest way to write the original expression so getting expressions uh, into the form you want is something of an art basically so in most cases it is best simply to experiment trying different transformations until you get what you want often you will be able to use palettes you see there are palettes available and then classroom assistant palette and math this math assistant palette that will also be able to help you to uh, write the expressions or get the expressions in the form you want to uh, be you want them to be represented so but up till now you have seen some examples which have uh, expressions with a, a single variable so you can choose to write it as a sum of terms a product and so on if you have an expression with several variables then it becomes more interesting and there is an even wider selection of possible forms you can for example choose to group terms in the expression like group together by x or group together by y or group together uh, based on some uh, values of x or the powers of x on, on that and for that i have a couple of example over here the functions we'll be using is collect and factor terms which will be used for rearranging expressions in several variables so for example i have a, a function let's call it v and the function is uh, 3 plus 2x yes and then maybe uh, x plus 2y So we have this uh, algebraic expression it has two variables x and y and let's see what happens if we expand this so basically we have now a algebraic expression it has two variables so what happens when we use collect so basically what collect is doing is grouping together so i say okay I want to from this expression v I want to group uh, together terms that involve the same power of x so it has now grouped together all the terms in this expression that have the same power of x and is this done together x square x cube or x square simple x Similarly, if you say, okay, I want to uh, group together by values of power of y. So now it has grouped together the uh, terms in this variable, in the expression that involve the same power of y. And then if I use factor terms, on this expression with respect to y 
this factors out the factors out the uh, piece that doesn't depend upon y. So you see now there is nothing which is dependent on y. So it has factored out factored the terms out which are not dependent on y. So as you have seen, uh, even when you restrict yourself to polynomials and rational expressions, there are many different ways to uh, there are many different ways to write any particular expression. So if you consider more complicated expressions involving, uh, for example, higher mathematical functions, the variety of possible forms becomes still greater. And as a result, it is totally infeasible to have a specific function built into the Wolfram language to produce each possible form. Rather, the Wolfram language allows you to construct arbitrary sets of transformation rules for converting between different forms. Uh, many uh, other functions are available over here, there as well. For example, uh, some other forms of functions can be like uh, uh, like trig uh, expand. So, bas so basically this expands out the trigonometric expression, writing it so that all the functions have argument x. So you can use the trigonometric expand. Then you can also use similarly trig factor. which uses trigonometric identities to generate a factored form of the expression. You can also use like uh, trig reduce. So what trig reduce will do, it will reduces the expression by using multiple angles. Similarly, you can use like complex expand. So maybe if I have like function like sine of x plus you can have the, uh, you can expand the sine as assuming that x and y both are real in this uh, scenario or you can use uh, if you want to consider that uh, the uh, these are not real values and these are like uh, uh, they should be treated as in complex values so maybe I'll just uh, give them a range over here then. so simply using the complex expand but now this is not considering x and y as real. This is uh, expansion is allowing x and y to be complex as well. But one thing is very important in understanding is that, for example, if I have might have shown you, like if I take a square root of x and y. So you see Wolfram language has not automatically expanded out non-integers powers of the product. But if you want to expand these out as well, like then you can use a function called power expand. And then what will happen, it, it will expand the expansion based on the uh, powers of the uh, products. So now it has expanded this function also. So there are multiple ways you can uh, uh, try to put expressions into different forms. So you have seen expand, expand all factors, simplify together, apart, uh, trigonometric, some of the trigonometric functions are also available like complex expand or trig reduce. And all these functions can be used to play around and uh, get your expressions in different forms depending upon what is your requirement and how you want to get the uh, result to be uh, displayed out for you. Up till now, we have seen some of the uh, simplifications uh, without any assumptions. So in certain times, you also need to apply a certain assumption. 
uh, for example, if the elements are real, they are integers or prime, and you want to simplify basis on that. So you can use the same, same function called simplify. So, but now if you see that the values of x, if you are simplified, can be different depending upon the value of x. For example, if x is less than 0, it should have a different simplification value. If the value of x is greater than 0, there should be a different uh, uh, value simplified out of that. So if you can give the uh, assumption how you want to simplify, so you say, OK, I want to simplify this expression, but this is my assumption that x is greater than 0. And you see, this now it has directly simplified that because under root of x squared will be x. So Wolfram language understood that, it took your assumption and then it simplified based on that. So no automatic uh, simplification can be uh, done on certain expressions uh, where uh, Wolfram language has multiple uh, answers coming out based on the values uh, you provided. So for example, in this expression, Wolfram language understand that there's no automatic simplification can be done because the results can vary the simplification can vary based on what is the uh, what is a? a either it is real or it is imaginary number or it is positive it is negative so it will not try to do that but if you give the assumption on that then wolfram language will be able to uh, solve that so for example i say okay I want to simplify the above result, simplify the above example, but then I am now giving some assumptions. I'm saying that A is greater than 0, and I can also give another an assumption that B is also greater than 0. And then now you see, based on that, when A is greater than 0 and B is greater than 0, these both statements are true, Wolfram language will be able to simplify this and give you a simplified result for that. So let's, uh, here's a, another example of uh, involving a trigonometric function. So for example, you have a function called arc sine and then sine of x and uh, maybe it's range from minus pi by two. I'm giving the exemption values over here where the x range is given between certain so x is given a range where it is greater than minus pi by 2 but less than pi by 2 and then I can do the simplify on that by providing this assumption. And now Wolfram language is able to understand and automatically calculates that the simplified answer for this when x lies between these two values will be x. So some domains used in assumptions is you give the element expression and then you tell what domain it is. The domains can be real, integers, or uh, primes as well. So for example, uh, if similarly, if you have square root of uh, x square and you want to simplify x square, uh, assuming that x is a real number. So you can say, okay, simplify and then you give element x as reals. So element, variable and the domain. So element x is real. And then based on that you will get a simplified result. Similarly, if you want to uh, simplify another function and you want to assume that the uh, values of n is an integer value so you can just provide like x so this is my function and we'll want to simplify that but I am also telling Wolfram language that this n is basically an integer so based on that Wolfram language will be able to give you a simplified answer for that so with the assumption givens, so let's take another example of uh, Fermat's little theorem. So 
here is a format little theorem and I'm giving the elements A as integers and element P are prime. So simplifying this theorem by mentioning, giving the assumption that A is an integer, whereas P will be the primes. And based on that, I would be able to get a simplified answer for that. Similarly, uh, let's take another last example for this section, then we'll move forward. So simplify uh, sine of x, but not arc sine of x. And is real, then x is real. So you can mention how to uses these facts. So Wolfram language automatically understands that and it gives you the results based on that. So let's move forward now and see what functionalities are available if you are interested to uh, picking out pieces of algebraic expressions. So for example, in this, I'll start with a uh, algebraic expression, which is say in an expression E. So this is my algebraic expression. And the function we are going to now talk about is called coefficient. So if I use this coefficient function and call this e with respect to x, so this basically gives the coefficient of x in e. So if whenever you are interested to get the coefficient of form, like form in this coefficient of x in this expression, the function will be coefficient. Similarly, if you want to uh, find the highest power of in an, in, in an expression, like what is the highest power in this expression for y? So you can use x co ninth function expression, and you want to see what is the highest power for y. So highest power of y in this expression is four. So I am, it should get a result four. So you can use an exponent expression and the variable you want to see that. Similarly, you can use the part function. So if you have seen my data visualization course or my other courses, you must be now be very familiar with this part function. Basically, this part function will give me the fourth term in this expression. So whatever will be the fourth term in this expression, it will be here. So if I want like the second term, this one. So you can pick the pieces out of the uh, expressions uh, using this also. So the coefficient also uh, works with the polynomials that are not exp explicitly expanded uh, out. So for example, if you have a uh, expression like, uh, which is not x one plus three x plus four y, And then you say, okay, I want to see the coefficient of x. So this will work on these instances as well. So this, yeah. So this will work with polynomials that are not explicitly expanded out as well. Similarly, if you want to pick out some other uh, pieces of the rational expression, so for example, you have a expression, uh, maybe I have typed it already, let's use that. So maybe I have this ex rational expression R, which is has some numeric numerator value and a denominator value, and you want to pick out all of certain things of, say, okay, I not need to pick the denominator of this. So you get the denominator value for that. Or you say, okay, I want to have the numerator of. So you can pick the pieces out of the rational expressions also. Let's uh, move to our uh, 
last topic today, which will controlling the display of large expressions. So uh, it is quite easy that when you are doing certain types of uh, numerical, uh, uh, certain types of uh, uh, calculations, you might end up with extremely complicated expressions. Often you will not see the complete result of the uh, computation as well. So like for example, if I expand this values to 100, you will see that Wolfram language doesn't show all the display in one result. It's it's saying that, okay, these are, and then in between there are like 5,144 other values also. So a very large output is generated, but it's just showing a sample for that. But you can, it gives you the plot like show less or show more or show all, which will be too long to, such a big result. So you can like using these keys, you can restrict the values or, you know, there's a semicolon. If I evaluate it, it will be evaluated, but you will not see the result for that. So you can also uh, control the, by that. But you can also expand and you can see where to stop, like how many values you need to see. Okay, so maybe you say, I don't want to see like all of these like, 10,000 values coming in. I want to see the values and just stop it at a certain values. So maybe if I take this control L and I say, okay, expand uh, this and uh, I want to see maybe short result for that. So it will, by using the short, what it does, it will just display the out, one line of output and and if it, here it's telling how many of the values have been left behind. So 5,000 are still more, but then it shows you the result in only one line. But what if you say, okay, uh, I want to have a short result for uh, this, but in three lines. So now you get the result in three lines of that. And then you can always see how much is the result for that by using the length function. So you see the total answer is like uh, the like, values are like 5,151. So you can see the short values or you can restrict them in one line or three line or four line. So how you can do that. So there are basically uh, three different ways of uh, uh, shorten your output. One is by using command and then putting in a semicolon. So it will execute command, but do not print the result. Second is you do expression and then do you put the short command. So it will be a one line form of expression, or you can do short result and then end outline numbers. So if you say, okay, I want to have maybe a more result over here. So it will give you more result based on that. So you can uh, control the display of the large expressions also uh, depending upon what your requirement is to which extent you want to display your results over here. So basically what we have done today over here is I have given you a quick overview of the some of the uh, algebraic calculations functions which are available and which are widely used. There are many more, there are certain tutorials in the help menu. If you go over in the help, you can go and find more functions which are uh, utilized over there. But these are some of the very basic and widely used uh, functionalities which can be used for uh, uh, transforming different forms, expanding, simplification. Simplification is some of the function, it, it comes on almost daily utilization of my work. So whenever I'm taking some integratives or taking some derivatives, a simplify, simpli, simplify function is, is, is the main, uh, main function <laughs> I will be using. So here's a quick summary of uh, what we have uh, studied. We have seen expand function, which basically multiplies out products and powers. We see expand all, which will expand everywhere. Factor is give you a product of minimal factors, simplify, full simplify, together, apart, factor terms, correct, 
collect ex trig trigonometric expand, trigonometric uh, reduce. Then you can also uh, uh, use a function called trig to it. So you can convert trigonometric functions to exponential functions. Maybe let's uh, zoom it out a little. Yeah. So you can use a trigonometric to exponential function, or you can convert exponential function to trigonometric functions. You can convert and play from one around to another. You can use power expand to transform certain uh, uh, certain expressions uh, based on their power, picking some parts out of that. So this is the basic quick introduction of the uh, algebraic calculations. Uh, if you have any questions, feel free to uh, type. So someone has asked me, why you put uh, uh, percentage sign? So percentage sign, what does it, it will just take the last output. So for example, if my output is uh, five and if I, so it will just take, it's a shortcut to the last output. So rather than solving the expression again, or if I'm doing a quick calculation or doing a quick prototype, I can just put the uh, percentage sign and this means this is a shortcut referring to the last output. So um, uh, with that, I thank you all to uh, attend to this session. I hope you have learned uh, some of a new functionality in Wolfram language. Uh, stay tuned for some other uh, uh, talks of me if you are interested in, in doing differential equations or uh, uh, finding derivatives uh, in Wolfram language. I have already done those sessions last month. Their recordings are available online. I've already done a session on data visualization. It's a it's a, almost a three hour session and a very interesting uh, session on data visualization using Wolfram language. So a lot more work has been uh, uh, is in the pipeline. So uh, if, if you are interested in these talks, do uh, subscribe to my channel. Then in that way, you will be able to get uh, a reminder or get a notification of what my next uh, session will be. So just to give you a glimpse, a couple of the uh, 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 new projects which I'm working on is uh, uh, I'm preparing a talk on quantum computing. Then I'm also preparing a talk on developing dashboards using Wolfram uh, uh, language, which is very much useful for business analysts and that. So uh, uh, someone has asked me what's the difference between Mathematica and MATLAB. I will refrain and I will ex excuse myself from answering that uh, question. Uh, from being an electrical engineer, I have used both of these uh, 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 both both of these softwares. They, they both are uh, they both are good, but definitely it depends how, what is your utilization is. I have found Mathematica much 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 easier to use, and it can be used in multiple domains. I'm not restricted to only engineering related domains. Uh, I can use Mathematica for other things, especially for example, if you have signed up for my talk, you have seen a, a web page for the registration. I have I've created that in Mathematica, maybe in five minutes. So uh, that is the flexibility of Mathematica uh, or, and, or the Wolfram language or the Wolfram system in complete is that you are not uh, dependent on other toolboxes or packages or something like that. You want to do something, there is one complete solution available to you. You want to go into the cloud, you want to manage your class online, you want to develop quizzes, you want to develop uh, lecture notes, you want to do slideshows. You see, I just did my slideshow in, uh, in the Mathematica desktop and uh, you see how easy and flexible it is. Uh, if you want to know more about that, you can contact me on a personal level. I'll be able to uh, give you more concrete examples because personally I've used both in my in the past as well. Uh, so uh, with that, I thank you everyone uh, for uh, being today with me. If you have any questions, every one of you know where to catch me. So thank you everyone uh, for being with me and I'll see you again in, in a couple of weeks time. Thank you. Bye-bye.